Today we're gonna to talk about games that reward exploration in cool ways. Games that don't just give you the, hey cool, a new sword feeling, uh, but more meaningful games that give you important, worthwhile stuff for exploring, like just more satisfying gameplay around every corner, better tricks, secrets, strange quests, or just cool vibes that can make it worth the trek. We've got a mix of traditional games, experimental games, and these are just our own subjective picks. Some games we love. So let's get started off with number 10 and talk about Outer Wilds, still an incredibly underrated game to this day. We included it in our Game of the Year picks the year it was originally released, and it's still going strong. And part of the reason is the game's incredibly unique structure. So the way it kind of goes down is that you are an astronaut in a world filled with different aliens and planets, and you're exploring a solar system that is primed to blow thanks to a supernova exploding in 22 minutes and then everything resets so you're stuck in this 22 minute time loop and in those 22 minutes it's up to you to essentially unravel the mystery of what's going on and you do that simply by exploring the game encourages exploration in a unique way because it's pretty much the whole way to move along you gotta really get around and figure things out the solar system explodes everything restarts and you take that knowledge that you gained through poking around and use it to progress further whether it's just learning more about this secret ancient alien race or puzzles to actually get ahead. And it is incredibly satisfying to see it to the end. Uh, Mobius Digital, the developers behind this game, really crafted a really cool world filled with alien races, cool planets, and just stuff to figure out and learn. And it's really worth the exploration. Now, next over at number nine, we're going even more left field and talking about the Stanley Parable. Now, the Stanley Parable was originally released in 2013 on the PC, but it's recently been given a new lease on life thanks to a full re-release on consoles with new content called the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. So we figured it was a good time to talk about it. This game, you might look at it and just want to call it a walking simulator because all you do is walk around in first person and click on stuff, but it's so much more than that. This game tells a quirky, weird, narrated story filled with humor and weird wonder. And the entire structure of the game is just built around you kind of poking around and following along and not really always doing what you're supposed to. Just but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. The narrator guides you throughout the game, but you're free to take a left instead of a right, or go up instead of down, and everything will change. And that, in and of itself, is like the definition of exploration, and it's unlike any other game. The more times you replay, the more times you decide to go here instead of there, you learn more stuff, you encounter a completely different story scenario, or tons of new bits and jokes. It's absolutely different around every turn, so the Stanley Parable, especially with the awesome new content, just really encourages you to explore every inch of what they designed, what they put in this game. It's great, it's fun to explore the ins and outs, but it's hilarious. Hilarious. It is totally worth playing. Next over at number eight, we talk about a lot of conventional open world games here on the channel, but we never give enough love to Mad Max. Now the Mad Max game that came out the same day as Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, it just doesn't get talked about enough, probably because it came out the same day as Phantom Pain. Anyway, uh, Mad Max has a really interesting open world. While other similar games are jam-packed with things to see and find and do to keep you busy, Mad Max is the total opposite. And what makes the world so cool is the fact that it's so empty. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to feel that way. It's just a sprawling, empty wasteland with not a lot to find, but there is some stuff hidden out there and then that makes that extra special. Exploring and looking for enemy camps can be really rewarding. You can find scrap to upgrade your car and Max himself, but you can also find new shells for your car as well as project parts for strongholds. But one of the things that makes it really rewarding is actually finding the spots that have all this stuff. You might be standing on the top of a big cliff and see some sort of old world ruins, or maybe the wreckage of a ship, and then you might know that there might be loot there. When you get close, it will pop up on your map and let you know that it is lootable, but seeing it off in a distance from so far with the game's incredible art style and draw distance as a potential spot is really cool. And the upgrades and stuff you get are really satisfying because they make a difference to your character or your vehicle. They're all noticeable and there's really no filler or fluff here. It's all just useful stuff. And it makes roaming those empty, lonely, post-apocalyptic landscapes that much better. The vibe here
here is so cool. And the treasure you find just makes it even sweeter. Next up at number seven, we had to mention Elden Ring. Now, I know probably a lot of you are very sick of hearing about Elden Ring at this point if you watch any gaming YouTube videos, but we had to give it a nod on this list because of how well the exploration flows, how natural it all is, and just how much stuff is tucked away in all corners of this game. The exploration in this game is so worthwhile, not just because it's like an RPG and you're making your character stronger or anything like that, but just because of how much stuff you will be surprised to find and how well-crafted and how interesting it all really is. This game has stuff that is incredibly well hidden and so many optional secret areas, secret bosses, secret items are just completely hidden, maybe behind a bush that you would never look behind. But all of that stuff, all of that level of hidden stuff just adds to such a satisfying sense of exploration, but really just like adventuring, just good old fashioned wandering around and finding cool stuff. And also of course, finding new things to get your ass kicked by. Next over at number six, we have Hollow Knight. It's an incredible game. It's a Metroidvania. So in a lot of ways, yes, of course, this game encourages exploration, but we think Hollow Knight does it just exceptionally well. Also, uh, we're still just thinking about the sequel, Silk Song, all the time. We're dying for that game. And as of the time of making this video, we still don't have our hands on it. But the original Hollow Knight just hides so much cool stuff, enemies, bosses around every corner that just makes it so satisfying. Also, thanks to a really good level of challenge in this game, it makes that exploration pretty tense and sometimes pretty nerve wracking in a game that on the surface just looks like a quirky good time. There's a, actually a lot more to it. It's honestly kind of hard to put our finger on why we thought of it for this list, but it just, it just feels right. Next over at number five, we have The Witcher 3. Yes, this is probably another one that feels like an obligation at this point, but stop and think about exactly why. The Witcher 3 is another open world RPG adventure, but it's an incredibly unique one just because of how well crafted it is. How every single inch of the game world, the map, every side quest, every NPC really has a bit of care put into them. That makes exploring every inch of the map and going deep into some woods or some forests just truly worth it. You'll always end up finding something cool like a haunted spooky shack or a mysterious cave or a lost stranger. Not to mention you could just find some really awesome loot that'll give you a really good leg up later on in the game. But along with that, it's just a good vibe. The way the wind howls, the way the trees sway, the way the sun rises and sets incredibly beautifully, the way you can always hear some creepy gross monster in the distance. This is one of those games where yes, it does have a big map filled with a bunch of things to do. The way it's all presented, the way it's all set up, and then the way it all is made just really makes you want to turn off the mini map completely and just get lost. And it deserves a lot of credit for that. Now, next over at number four, speaking of getting lost, the Elder Scrolls, specifically Morrowind. Now, we wanted to highlight Morrowind because this game does not hold your hand at all. This game sets you loose. Now, every Elder Scrolls game essentially starts you off in a bad position and then opens the door and pushes you out, but Morrowind gives you probably the least amount of guidance in the modern Elder Scrolls games, and it makes it such a stronger experience for that. You can completely mistakenly just walk right past where you're supposed to go for the main starting quest line and get completely lost and stumble into all manner of weird things. But you can also cheese your way through pretty far and get some cool equipment. Really, there's so much to this game and none of it really is guided that it makes exploration feel so much more worthwhile. Even if you stick to the main quests, the game doesn't always spell out for you where exactly to go next or how exactly to get where you gotta go next. And for that, it's an incredibly unique experience, not to mention the world you're exploring itself is just so unique and weird and otherworldly and unlike any other setting in a fantasy game you've ever played before. Trust us. Next down to number three, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. What on the surface might seem like a basic boy answer, honestly, we're just trying to highlight the pinnacle of what Rockstar Games has been doing with building open worlds. People talk about all the time how great it is to explore all of San Andreas in San Andreas or Grand Theft Auto 5 and all the hidden stuff that you can discover, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is a world like no other. On the one hand, it has what I mentioned before, the vibe, the absolute beauty, the sound design, the detail, the depth, to 
truly just turn the HUD off and get lost in this game. You don't even have to do anything video gamey. Just go for a ride on your horse or go for a walk in the woods. Either way, if you do it in an abstract way or if you're just playing the game the old fashioned way, the exploration is worthwhile in this game just because of how lived in it feels. People go about their businesses, stores open and close. There are always people out roaming the wilderness, doing their own thing. They really constructed a believable, deep lived in world that feels almost like just a perfect slice of real life, or at least real life in the wild, wild west way back when. Then of course you have all that rock star goodness, the secret areas, the creepy shacks, the weird Easter eggs, the surprising side quests, the random strangers you meet along the way. All of that is so worthwhile and not in that classic video game sense where you're checking off a box. It's, it's really about the experience here. And it's an experience that just feels so damn alive. Next over at number two, we have Dishonored, an immersive sim that is something that you wouldn't think we would include on this list, but honestly, it makes sense. What type of game rewards exploration more than a game like Dishonored or similar games of this style? From Deus Ex to System Shock to Thief, these types of games are better the more you explore because they're completely intricately designed in a way that the more you poke around, the more you kind of unlock and unravel this Rubik's Cube of a play session where you can truly tackle things however you want. The amount of freedom in the Dishonored games and similar games of this genre are really unparalleled. But you can only experience all that stuff if you explore the areas, explore the maps, explore the levels, and truly discover the staggering amount of ways that developers allow you to accomplish your goals. If you've never played a game like this before and you want to truly be rewarded for your exploration from a gameplay standpoint, you gotta check it out. Now down at number one, let's talk Subnautica. Subnautica is a survival game with a sci-fi spin. You're on a planet covered in water and it's about you exploring the depths and surviving. But it's really unlike any other survival game. The chances are you've played one or two, you get the gist, but Subnautica really is something else. And there's a reason why its popularity has lasted so long. I think specifically because it's like a mix of mastering the environment, right? And slowly developing more tech and just understanding and learning the game to go deeper into the undiscovered depths of this world, but it's also conquering your fears, the fear of the unknown, the deep, dark ocean. There's not much more to say about it other than that it's something that if you possibly can, don't watch, don't read about, don't listen about, just go in as blind as you can and completely experience it yourself because it is an incredibly rewarding experience. Subnautica's exploration reward is really, at the end of the day, just true 100% satisfaction. Those are some games with different types of exploration that we really enjoy and find really rewarding for a variety of different reasons. If you like exploring in games, definitely let us know some of your favorites down in the comments. This is endless. We could talk about a million other games. We had to pick 10 today, but we wanna hear yours. If you enjoyed this video, clicking the like button's all you gotta do if you like talking games with us. We would very much appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.